Welcome back for another episode of Strive for 25. Joel Farrell here and looking forward Welcome to Welcome to another episode of the Strive for 25 podcast. Joel Farrell here and I've got an amazing guest on today, Kiana Hargett in the Maryland DC market and we're going to kind of be digging into a couple things. Um, this is going to fall into the savings equation and also the results equation because we're going to have a, a couple of crossing of streams here again. The savings equation, income minus your expenses equals your savings and well, income, generating more income in this environment is a hot topic and people that are doing things to generate more income. And then results, hey, there's so much information out there. How do you actually uh, take information and execute them? And, and how, does that, how does that happen? So uh, Kiana, um, do you want to introduce yourself here? Hi, Joel. I am Kiana Hargett, um, originally from Washington, D.C., born and raised. Uh, a rarity. People are almost, you never meet somebody who's literally born and raised in Washington, D.C. from Southeast. If you know anything about the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area, um, I was raised in Southeast during the 80s, during the height of the drug uh, drug era. Um, so the fact that I'm even still alive <laughs> and successful, um, I, I beat the statistics. And so I, I'm, I'm, I'm here, I'm a graduate of University of Richmond, I have an MBA from Trinity, um, and I have so many other things that I do in my life that I do to bring me joy and to help other people, and I'm hoping that I get to do that for the rest of my life. So that's me. That, that's awesome. That's awesome. So you've got a, a full-time job, and you've got a yeah. consulting business that you do where you're helping entrepreneur, entrepreneurs and business owners do their thing. Yes, yes. So I am a financial analyst with the Department of the Navy, and I have been a contractor for 20, almost 20 years. Don't try to do the math on my age. Um, <laughs> people always look at me like, wait, what? Um, and I just recently converted to civilian, but I have, I started a business called the Firewater Group, LLC, where I do business consulting, bookkeeping and accounting for small and medium-sized businesses and nonprofits. So we've definitely seen a, a boom, I think, coming out of COVID with more people doing things on their own and doing things on the side and, and starting businesses. Um, and you've got a passion for this, you know, but if you're going to kind of explain the biggest struggle or the, the, the biggest things that you're working on with these aspiring business owners, what are, what are some of these things that, that these aspiring, you know, new business owners are having to overcome or working on? Most, most business owners are afraid of accounting and math. They're afraid to actually look at the numbers. Um, and Joel, you probably know this from the mortgage. There are a lot of people who apply for mortgages and haven't looked at their bank accounts. They literally don't know how much money comes in and goes out. They don't know if they're actually making money. They don't know if the energy they're spending towards their business is worthwhile. They don't know how to quantify it. They know how to qualify it. You know, it's a good thing to do. It brings in customers, but they don't really know if they're charging enough or they don't know if they're paying too much for a particular service. And in that regard, I might get a client and I have to tell them, right now you have a very expensive hobby and that's how the IRS sees it. <laughs> and <laughs> I know it, it might be a harsh way to say that, but in order to get people to start thinking of, even if it's a solopreneur, hey, I've got to think beyond doing everything with my own hands and just charging this amount because it's a number that I imagine. No, we need to charge a number that gets you some profit because otherwise you became a business owner to get away from a job, but you just created another job and it doesn't get you very far if you don't know your numbers. So I think that is the biggest struggle I see when I take one of clients. They just don't know the numbers. So that's something that you can help them work at, work through those numbers with them, quantify, get it on paper, get it into Excel or computers or some type of system. And, and then what? Then, then what happens after that? Uh, then we evaluate um, if you're going in the right direction if how long you should go in that, that direction um there, there's gonna be some background noise so don't worry about that um if you 
have taken on two parts of your business. Like, say, for instance, you're an event planner. Okay, event planning also includes you got to have decorations. You got to know how to uh, decorate a location that has nothing. It's just an empty space. But should you get into booking the spaces for a client? Probably not. And if you do, you need to charge more because that's a service, right? Right? Some event planners are just, you know, I decorate the space, I make it look nice, and I go home. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to start booking the space, booking the talent, you know, making sure all the guests are right, that's a different level. And that might be too much for you, and you may not know how to price that. Because if you've added that service and haven't priced that correctly, now you have an expensive hobby. You're not making money. So, and things like that. Just sometimes I really realize that they've taken on more than they should have in their business. Yeah. So you're helping somebody work on the business rather than all, always being working in the business. And, Absolutely. And, and so I, I'm in the mortgage industry and I have a sales coach for a number of years. David Lindsmeyer. I know you're out there. Uh, hello. You're my favorite person. Uh, <laughs> just saying anyway. So like at the end of the day, like, you know, it's important to have that extra support, extra person you can run, by, run things by and have accountability and bring in new ideas and know how to know how to kind of brainstorm, how to attack and execute. Um, and, and you and I were talking about a couple different kind of, uh, clients that you've got um, that have really kind of had some pretty successful turnarounds uh, and, and stories. Do you want to share one or two of those? Uh, just kind of, you know, how you started, where, where their pain points were and kind of where they ended up on the back at uh, uh, the end? Absolutely. So um, actually my first paying client um, is a client that came to me. She had another business first. Um, she, she still has this business. She makes shea butter and coconut oil and for skin and hair. Um, but she wasn't quite ready to start paying someone and we are friends. I said, no problem. You know, I help you with the accounting. I help you figure that out. Well, she kind of ran off on her own and kept doing her thing. Okay, no problem. Well, she started another business. Um, it's a luxury hookah service. It's actually a really good service. Um, but they had hired someone else to be their accountant and they weren't getting the information that they needed. And so she called me kind of frantically. She was like, I know I asked you to do accounting for this other business, but can you do this business? Because we're actually making money in this business. And I said, absolutely. Um, and one of their pain points was literally, they had no idea if they were making money or not. They knew that people were buying products. They were getting booked for events. But... They didn't know if they were actually making because money was coming in and then they were spending it on product or money was coming in and they were spending it on staff members. So they didn't know, you know, if they were successful or not. And that was one of those conversations where I had to say, at this very moment, you have a very expensive hobby. You you have something that could become a business, but you have an expensive hobby. And when I said the price for the monthly service and they didn't flinch, I said, there it is. That's what I've been waiting for. Someone mm -hmm. who trusts me and okay. said the price, the service is worth the price. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that's such an interesting thing. You know, what do you charge for a service? And, you know, I'm, I'm on social media looking at things, research, researching things and, and, and learning things. I can't tell you you know, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, there's just so much great information out there if you know how to find it. I mean, it's just such a great resource and tool to, to learn something. Um, but, you know, the people that are selling online courses, I mean, there's a whole line of thinking, that, hey, you know what, if you charge too little, no one's going to buy it. But all of a sudden, if you double your price, people are going to understand that that value is something that they want to purchase. And so it's just an interesting, you know, um, you know, correlation, how that, how that stuff works. Um so then this client, right? So they, they, they go through the process with you. They start charging more for the services. They start making more revenue. Then um, what happens? You know, what, what, what happens through that process uh, over time? Where, where, where are things now with them? So um, they start charging more. You start um, 
evaluating if the customers they have are going to pay the higher price. That's one. Mm -hmm. Two, if you need to expand your customer base. So sometimes things like services and products, like let's 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 go back to the shea butter. So shea butter is a product that eventually you'll buy again because you'll run out. You put it on every day. You're going to have a repeat customer. But then there are some products that have a long shelf life. So her hookah product, I could buy a hookah and keep it for a long time. So I'm only a customer one time. I might come back for shisha or whatever else, you know, is the add-on, but the main product is the hookah. And so helping her see the ebbs and the flow of your business, okay, people buy a hookah in the summertime because they're having parties and they want to, people to come over. Um, but round about December, January, February, March, nothing. And I said, you got to find a new set of customers because customers that bought that product last summer, they probably don't need a new one this summer. And if your main product is that, you know, $200, $300 glass hookah that's custom made, you're not going to get that sale again every year unless you add new customers. And some people are really afraid to step out of their regular customer base. And I had to tell them, and I'm going to be very frank, Joe. I had to tell my girlfriend, who was African-American woman, girl, you need to get some other people <laughs> buying your product. The same way the music industry works. People always say, oh, you know, we don't get the support we need here in Washington, D.C. and Maryland. You platinum until you have an array of audience members buying your music. You don't fill an arena until your music sounds good to more than just the people in your backyard. Right. So something as simple as expand your customer base, not add more product, expand your customer base. So you're saying, hey, take your existing product mix, maybe a couple small tweaks here or there, but then figure out a way to be able to get and find where the, a different, broader audience may have a need. And Absolutely. Then, okay. And then, and then how do you do that? So you have got to, one, you can't be a keyboard bandit. Social media is great. It is great. Yes, it can have a global reach. But what I do know is, is, especially if you have a service that aligns with your product, because she also does private events with it, you got to be out there to be seen. You got to get into um, industry associations so that other people who do the same thing that you do know you exist. And you can't see other people that do what you do as competition. You got to see them as either partners or someone you can learn from. Because they might be able to tell you, oh, if there's a conference that comes to Las Vegas every year and their people, they will rent what you sell on a regular basis. So think about that. Instead of me selling the product and they taking it, I can take that product that I would charge $300 for for someone to own it. And I could charge $50 an hour, $100 an hour, $200 an hour for someone to use that same product. So instead of yeah, earning three hundred dollars that I sold it one time, I can make six. I can make double on that product by renting it. Interesting. Right? Interesting. All because I was at a conference or an association. Someone said, "Hey, you go here. People want that, and they'll pay good money for it." But you don't know that if you're stuck in your box and with your regular people in your bubble all the time, you you won't learn that. Yeah. So. Another example that you mentioned, there was a fitness person that you're working with and then also a music artist that you're, that you're working with. So I, I want to dig into these quickly because I, I really want the audience to know um, the different things that you're into, the different types of people you're working with and how you may be able to help people in different ways. Because again, I'm in mortgages. There's a million of us mortgage people out there, but like I can only help so many people. And my job is to go find the people that need my help. In, in your world, you're working a full-time job you've only got so many hours in the day to be able to help people uh, in, in this this consulting business. So 
really you want to find, spend time finding the right clients that absolutely need your services to get to the next level. So I really want to dig into a couple of these examples and, and, and maybe kind of also explain, well, who is the next type of person that you really want to uh, work with or help um, uh, and give that example? Absolutely. So yeah, you mentioned my, one of my fitness clients. Um, she won't mind me saying her name because <laughs> she loves it. Uh, April Shannon, she started Two Score Fitness. She started it on her 40th birthday. So Two Score equals 40. Um, and she's actually someone who, I'm a fitness instructor as well. And she would kind of come to my class and we kind of did some things, but she kind of, look, I can't do this. You move too much. I do. I have a lot of energy. You come to my class, we're going 55 minutes straight, no break. And so she got to that point. I don't know what the, I don't know why 40 is a magic number. Um, and she said, I have got to make a life change. So she started going to um, a fitness trainer. It was kind of a, a all encompassing thing with boot camp and changing your mind and getting your attitude right and eating. And she was asked to sub for the twerk portion of the fitness. Yes, twerk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, 40 was like, okay, let's try some new things. And she did it. And the people loved it. And so she said, well, let me keep doing this. Let me keep trying this. And she got group group exercise certified. And she's a certified personal trainer. And she just started having classes on a regular basis, not even knowing if people would like it or if people would continue to come. Now, I caveat that with she's still a full-figured woman. And it is very difficult for people to take you serious when you are full figured. So her business model is not about losing weight per se. Losing weight is actually like a supplemental thing that happens. So her motto, model is about um, body positivity and age appreciation, which is vastly different than what we know from the fitness world. Fitness world, oh, build muscle, get strong, lose weight you know, so your doctor can take you off all these medications. Well, if you stop and think about it, a lot of the weight that people carry is not just the physical weight. It's what I think about myself when I look in the mirror. Do I love myself enough to take good care of myself? Can I show up to a dance class or a fitness class and not be so worried about what I look like that I just enjoy it? And then I... I earn the after effects of showing up on a regular basis. That's a very different model. Um, and age appreciation. Oh, she's she's got people uh, people in her classes up to eighty years old. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. So not not to kind, kind of uh, side note here, but when you're talking about that, I'm trying to figure out how to how that all fits together. How that how do you express that to, to a new customer or to a new client or whatnot. Um, but one of the things that, that we talk about, you know, even me personally, what I have, to, what I have to do for my job, because my job is just pure chaos, trying to deal with that all day. And, you know, we are so focused on goals and the end result. And some of the things that I look at and read and the people that I, uh, that I research is like trying to reframe our mindset and how we look at goals, because if you're focused on the goal and that's all it is, then, you know, if you don't hit the goal, well, what does that do to your, to your mental psyche and your emotions? And reframing it to, you know, trying to learn how to love the process. If you love the process, if you know, hey, you know what? I showed up one day, I showed up two days, I showed up 30 days in a row, you know, building a habit. And, and you you take that emotional, the, um, you know, the, um, the, the power of, oh, hey, I, I did the habit every single day. I showed up every single day. And that's the end result that you're trying to be able to gain. Yeah, then the results will take care of themselves. So is that kind of on the same plane as what you're talking about? Absolutely, absolutely. And even for um, April as a as a business owner, she, at first she was like, I, uh, she's like, I really didn't want, to, this wasn't the goal. I just was supposed to teach a couple classes and that was it. And she actually now has a fitness studio in um, Temple Island, you know, something that in her family generation, like she has literally broken a generational curse. Like she has a full-fledged business that she owns. Um, and a caveat, she also works a full-time job. Mm -hmm. So she's 
teaching classes. She's hired instructors, which means she is helping the economy, you know, people to continue to have income coming in. And she works a full-time job. So she's who's doing this balancing act. But in that same regard, she has also said the process of getting to this place, though difficult, she said is worth it. Because at some point, you know, we all say, is it worth it? Like, is it worth it? And you you might have an end goal of, oh, I want to make a million dollars. But when you get the million dollars, will you be happy with the million dollars? Will that be an or will it be I saw a need in the world, I knew I had the capacity to at least try to meet the need, and I worked towards it, and it gave me some level of freedom, or I put energy into the world, and I feel good about that. Because at the end of the day, yeah, we most of us do want to be millionaires, billionaires, but once you get the money, then what? But then what? Then, then, yeah. then what? If you're, if you're, you're going to continue to move the goalpost in terms of money at some point. Mm -hmm. And then you realize money doesn't make you happy. It's the thing that you get up to do every morning to put energy into the world that actually brings you joy. And she said that seeing people yeah. be comfortable in front of a mirror. So, you know, she has a dance studio, a fitness studio. So imagine being someone who's overweight. You got roles and places that you try to hide on a regular basis, but you can go into a space and feel comfortable dancing to music mm -hmm. and nobody is there to judge you. So if I'm a customer, right? I mean, we're, we're, we're coming out of COVID. People are used to just being solo in their house with maybe family or friends or whoever. And we're, and, and things are opening up obviously, you know, in the last, you know, how many months a year or whatever. And, you know, you're with a group of people, you know, you like what you do, you, you, you find something within yourself that you maybe didn't know was there, you know, maybe with positivity, confidence, whatnot. And then you look to your right or your left, and you got people that are probably feeling a lot of the same things. You know, is there some type of camaraderie and a network, social networks that are being built with these, with the people that are part of this group that they can, you know, have that, that reliance on? Absolutely. And, and I think that's the same thing that business owners have to do. You, you go, like, the example, you go to a fitness studio and you see other people who are like you who have struggled with their weight and struggle with their self-esteem, maybe unspokenly struggle with their self-esteem. And you look to your right and your left, you're like, I am not by myself. And it's the same thing with business owners. It's like, don't, don't stay behind the keyboard. Don't stay behind the computer. Don't stay stuck on your phone. Even if you say, well, I'm not comfortable going to a conference, there are so many virtual conferences now, but you can meet people virtually. They will put you in breakout rooms and you can't be afraid of that. Yeah. I've learned, I, even I have learned that the only way to grow is to be amongst other people. And if you are the smartest person amongst your group of friends and business people, you need a new circle. You don't have to leave your current circle, but you need a new circle because you're not going to grow if nobody around if nobody around you can push you up or help you make some tweaks and adjustments to move to the next level. You have to be amongst other people. And and statistically, if you're trying to lose weight or get your self-esteem up, you got to be around people who are, are in the process, who have, have built their self-esteem or they're working out together. Um. Do you remember The Biggest Loser? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that while most of them were working out together, they 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 pulled on each other's strength. When somebody was tired, they're like, no, come on, you can do this. You got, you got this. You can make it up the hill. You can do one more push-up. You can do one more sit-up. And they were successful. And a lot of them, when they went home and had to do it alone, it, it wasn't as successful as when yeah. they were in a group. And you could say, well, they were just on a ranch. All they, The only thing they had to do was exercise and eat right. <sighs> okay. But you go home and there's nobody to help you, nobody to encourage you, nobody to motivate you, no partner to show up to the workout with you at six in the morning. You just say, uh, I'll do it tomorrow. And tomorrow we'll keep coming and you'll fall back into old habits. Yep. So yep. fitness... And, and being having a new business, 
you have got to get in the room or around people who are doing what you're trying to do. And you can't see them as competition. You have to see them as motivation and know that none of us get it right the first time. Yeah. Nobody gets it right the first time. I, I love the whole identifying, hey, this is not your competition. This is this is your ally in some way, whether it be motivation or, or, or a resource. And, you know, something that we talk about, um, you know, at least I talk about with my team is that when that's a another loan officer or someone that's doing well, or that's not my competition. You know, my competition is my own limitations of capacity because there's only so many people that I we can take care of. And the only way we can take care of more people and, and service them and market and do all the things we need to do is to either do a couple of things, get better at our jobs, get become more efficient, figure out ways to, to use the technology to get them uh, better. And and then from, from there, grow the team, you know, get good people and help them grow. So our own limitations is, is our is my competition. It's not the next person. Absolutely. Um, and that's kind of kind of what you're saying, I think, in some way, uh, shape or form. Um, so. You're, you're talking to, you know, a lot of people that have passion and vision. And, you know, wh one of the things that I, I always say um, is that, you know, if I'm talking to somebody about building wealth, which is this, this channel is all, all about building wealth, right? You know, but at the end of the day, it's about building habits, having confidence, finding a superpower within yourself to be able to make you happier and, and do the things you, you love and are passionate about. Building wealth is not, it's not the end all be all. It's, it's a tool to be able to go do the things you're passionate about to have the power of choice to go do the things you want to do. But like at the end of the day, we're all, we're all going through different things in our lives and we have all these tools and information that are in front of us that can help us improve and reach a goal. But sometimes we're just not ready. We're not in the mental space to, to tackle that challenge for whatever reason. And it's just not your time, but certain things happen in your life, whether it's pain or joy or what, all the things that happen in between. And all of a sudden something just clicks and, and you're, and you're ready. And like, for me, you know, I say this all the time, like I've been pondering the, this podcast for a number of years and I just kind of, I couldn't get over the fact, well, all these great people are already doing it. So it's just, you know, it's just not my thing. It's just not my, not, not for me. But then I realized that, Hey, there's a ton of people out there that haven't been reached by, uh, you know, Tony Robbins or, you know, all the other greats that are out there. They just haven't been, been touched yet. And so my job is to go find a couple people that I can help out. And that, that's just what it is. So, right. or they have been touched, but that's not the voice that yeah. speaks to them. Yep. So, so for you personally, you know, tell me your journey of how you went from not doing this stuff on the side to where you said, okay, this is the time to do it. What was the so, process? Uh, um, I I guess I've always been doing it on the side. I've always given advice. I've always told people, you know, this is a good idea. You should, maybe you try or here's, you know, an app you can try or maybe you want to outsource that and here's, you know, how this could help you. Um, you know, my mom, my mom will tell you, yeah, <laughs> Kiana gives advice to everybody. <laughs> Diane, all the time. if you're listening out there, hello, how you doing? <laughs> and I say all the time, my friends don't listen. And so I said, well, if my friends won't listen and they won't pay, then I have to find some people that will listen and pay. Um, but during, so in February of 2020, when the, oh, you know, the coronavirus 19, it's over there. I said, if we know anything about history and biology, and the way that we move globally, it's not, this disease is not gonna stay in one place. So I'm on site and my government client and they start having meetings. When the government starts having meetings, pay attention. And my, one of my uh, sweet mates, she said, we're having a pandemic meeting every day. I said, oh really? I started packing up my stuff from my desk and taking it home. And I said, oh, we're going to be home for a year or so. She said, oh, no, maybe two weeks. I said, mm, I need you to read up on pandemics because if we're already calling this a pandemic, we're in trouble. So by March, I've packed up all my stuff. By the time they tell us that we need to be home, I've already set up my office. And I started to enjoy being home working from home way too quickly. 
And when I say enjoying working from home, I was getting up at six o'clock in the morning and exercising and then fixing breakfast and then logging on at 8.30 and have and doing my work. And as soon as I could log off work, you know, being able to be with my family or taking a break for lunch and, you know, taking a quick nap, I put it on my calendar, do not disturb or I'm in a meeting, you know, for a half an hour and taking, taking a nap. Hey, take a nap. <laughs> if you're working a nine to five and you're working from home, take your break, take your break. Um, but I just, I started to enjoy that way too much. And I said, I have got to figure out how to get off the hamster wheel. And I started listening to, um, podcasts, earn your leisure, yep. uh, David Shands, you know, sleepers for suckers. Um, I also started listening to, um, pastor Darius Daniels, who is a part of that, uh, grouping and, it was just like, it just kept speaking to me day and night, day and night. I would listen to it while I was working. And I said, I'm getting off the Samson Wheel. So I actually enrolled in University of Maryland Global Campus because for 10 years, I put off getting my certificate of planning. I put it off. And I said, Kiana, you're home. You're home. You have all the time in the world. So I'm actually only two classes shy of getting that of getting the certificate wow. from university of maryland before i can sit for the exam wow i have been a financial person since i was a little girl i love stocks i love savings and i love it i love it i love math and once i started taking the classes and we started kind of getting into the client aspect and i started writing like what I would tell, like they give you these business cases and scenarios, couples and businesses. And I started writing and responding. I was like, I love this. This, this is it right here. This, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. You know, I was working for a consulting firm, but I wasn't really doing consulting. It was more like staff augmentation. I wanted to actually help people. And so I was like, this is it right here. So when my girlfriend called me to help her with her business, Let's go. Let's, let's go. And it has been a slow roll, but I think slower is better for me because I do still work a full-time job. Oh, my God. I just saw a – I can't remember if it was on Twitter or Instagram. Gary Vaynerchuk out there talking about speed is the killer to the best businesses because it, if you're going too fast, if you're going fast at all, you're skipping steps in the process. And anyway, he's got a pretty cool thing out there. But, um, yeah. That's all. That's awesome. Yeah, and um, I will. I'll admit that I get a little. Uh, I don't want to say discouraged, but I go, "Oh, somebody else has, you know, got so many clients, or they're making so much money. I should really just jump out there." And then I go, "Hold up, wait, stop and think about that for a minute. Are you ready to quit your full time job? Because I do enjoy my full time job." Um, I realized if I went full steam ahead, I have a husband at home who likes to spend time with me and I like him. We still like each other. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, my mom lives with me. She's in her 70s. Um, my grandfather is living with me now. He's 90. So in order to quit my job and do this full time, it would be a big change for everyone. And I'm just not ready quite just yet but I have a plan and a process to get there, which includes, and I tell my business owners this, if you're not ready to outsource some things, like if you have to touch every single thing, you're not ready. If you got to keep touching it, if you got to be the accountant, the social media manager, the administrator, the contracts manager, customers, if you're not ready to outsource that to someone, even hiring an intern or teaching someone in your family to do it, you're not ready to be a business owner or entrepreneur because that's different. You, you've you signed up for a, a, another job, not necessarily to be a business owner because business owners don't work all day long. They might think a lot mm -hmm. and strategize, but they don't mm -hmm. work all day long. Yep. And so I am actually working on bringing in someone to my team. You know, hey, yeah, you, you, you got that part. You, you call these clients. <laughs> send out these emails because I'm going to be with my family. I've done the hard part. I've done the client engagement. Here, you do the follow-up. 
So I'm not quite yet ready. Go full speed ahead, but I'm on the path. Is is there a a process or a system or a line of thinking that that is consistent that you're kind of demonstrating with some of your clients in terms of just how, how you're able to help them either think clear, think more concisely, or put a process around something? Yeah. So I ask a lot of questions, and some of the questions might sound mean. For instance, um, one question I have asked is, "How long you plan to do this?" Mm-hmm. Like. How long do you really plan to do this? How long do you plan to show up for every um, event that you host or plan? How how long do you plan to sell this product? Or ask them, what is the age of this product? Like, how long do you pe- think people will want this? And if you think it's a finite time, then we need to discuss selling your business because you already know that at some point this is enough but if you don't start to think past the every day oh this is my baby you're going to be stuck holding a baby that doesn't (laughs) make any money (laughs) right um and trying to get people to understand that you're not going to go far without a team you just you just won't You'll be tired and you'll get a lot of things accomplished. But if you want to go further than you are going at this very moment, you have got to have a team. Even if it's just someone who can open your email and answer them to yeah. say, hey, thanks for, you know, if you haven't figured out how to set up the bot, because some people don't know how to set up the automatic responses, mm-hmm. or maybe you need a more personal touch. You want somebody to, Pick up the phone and call that person that came to your Facebook page or your website or your social media. Either you can hire a virtual assistant or find someone in your family that can respond to that. But you you have to think past just what you are to the business. So if I'm if I'm running a business, a solopreneur, like you mentioned before, and you know, I do have the goal aspirations of scaling, building a team, and they can come to you in theory, if you have capacity and and you can walk them through some processes, some ideas, some tips, and maybe even some systems, some, some system tools. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. Um, I want to say that's probably one of the, the biggest things that when I even just, I'm just talking random to, to business owners. I say, Hey, you know, have you tried this? Have you tried that? There's an app for that. There's, you know, a system you could do. And they go, Nobody has ever suggested that. And I'm thinking, really? Because to me, it seems so, you know, seems so simple. But then you have to stop and think if their business is something else, then their business is not operation. Their business is not applications and systems. Mm-hmm. So um, that, that that is a big thing. Like something as simple as telling someone about Linktree. You know, I had someone who did not know what a Linktree was. And I was like, oh, all of your links, your mm-hmm. your email, your website, your payment link, you know, you could put it in your Instagram bio and then you won't have to just be sending that to everyone or trying to figure out how to tell them to click the link because you can't put web addresses in um, your IG stories right. and your feed. So yeah, um, just things like that that help. Um, actually, right now I'm, I'm helping two of my clients. I forgot one. I have a comedian as well. Um hire interns oh wow that that's that sounds pretty cool you know she never thought about it i said well you're in entertainment what college student would not want to say they had an intern with a comedian and i i mean right now she's an up-and-coming comedian but she also has a production company so she's hosting like big name comedians wow if I was a college student, okay, so I can get some college credit. I might get a stipend, and I'm, because I'm helping someone throw parties, yes. yeah. But, but she never thought about hiring an intern. That's awesome. Because people don't think that, as a small business or solopreneur, that they're worth hiring an intern. 
You mm -hmm. only think of that for big businesses, but yeah, there's so many organizations, actually nonprofit organizations that train young people to get internships and wow. will probably pay the intern for a specific period of time to help you. Wow. Wow. Well, um, we'll I'll have to get some, some info and some links on that kind of stuff. That's, that's really cool. Um, so for, for your business, again, what, what's the name of the business again? And, and where, where can they find you? I am the Firewater Group, LLC. I am Firewater Group on Instagram and Facebook. Um, but if you just want to see smiling me, <laughs> I'm, I'm also on Instagram personally, sweet, Ms. MZ Kiki. And you'll see me and you go, she does that and that and that. <laughs> um, just because I love life. And I think, you know, do all the things that bring you joy. Damn right. What's if you could say, hey, you know what, this is the absolute like perfect client that you know that you can help that person really achieve their goals, their scale, scaling things, you know, building the business and the repertoire of clients you have. I mean, is there kind of a the ideal uh, type of person that you think that would be the right person to be introduced to or, or a fit? Like, what, what type of client are you looking for out there? So um, probably. I don't want to say ideal client, but the clients that seem to work best with me are people who have been in business maybe a short time, um, a little control freak kind of, but now understand that they need some help. They are ready to grow. Um and they're realistic about what that's going to take. Uh, I, I, I'll admit, I have had to let customers, clients go. Um, no hard feelings. But if you're not ready, it's, it's, it's just like a doctor telling you, we can get you off this medication, but you got to do A, B, C, X, Y, Z. It's not going to mm -hmm. be easy. It's not going to happen overnight. But if you do what I instruct you to do, you follow it. You don't even have to follow it 100%. Try 50, 60, 70%. We can get you off this medication. And I kind of follow the same process. Okay, you have all of these goals. Which mm -hmm. of these goals are top priority? Here's what we can do to get you to that goal. But you got to do what I instruct you gotta follow the instructions. So somebody who is ready that says, I see I have a need and I'm ready to do the work. I'm ready to go through the pain. The same as losing weight, the same as getting off of, you know, getting kicking an, an addiction. It's not gonna happen overnight. It's day by day. Because you didn't get addicted one time. You got addicted over time. Your business is not going to blow up overnight. People say, oh, they went viral and, you know, now they're making so much. But sometimes you got to ask people their story. Like, what's the backstory? How did you get here? How many nights did you stay up, you know, all night? How many times did you hear no? How many times did you get it wrong? How many times did you start over? Yeah. You don't go viral until you've literally gone through the process. You're not going to get rich. Until you've gone through the process, the, it's, it's the discipline. Oh my so, goodness! So I I hate that word. Just just to be clear, I hate that word, and and this is why. This is why I hate it because you have people who who just hey you know what I'm so driven I'm gonna go do this thing I just need some help, and people like me I'm ADHD like beyond so like like I'm dealing with distractions external and internal and so you know. The reason that I'm even here doing this podcast is I had to, uh, there's a book called Atomic Habits. And in the book, James Clear talks about the two minute rule. So I built this nighttime habit. I had all these things going on. I got two, you know, three, two year old twins at the time and trying to run, you know, do mortgages and do that business and try to do this thing on the side and, and get it to where it is right now, which is launching point. And it's like, I, I got to, you know, once they're, the kids are down, log back in and get a bunch of work done. And I'm exhausted by that time. So I put this two minute rule in place put on a timer for two minutes and I'm going to do this every single day. I'm going to track it 
And if I'm feeling it, I'll keep on working. If I'm not feeling it, I'll turn it off. And at least I did my two minutes. So that, that, that was for me, what I had to do. That's how it worked for my mind to get me to be able to work on this and spend the extra time. Cause otherwise I'm sitting on the couch, just like decompressing, trying to absorb what had to happen for the day, you know? So the reason why I say that about discipline is it's the right word. It's just, well, once you say it, well, how do you form it? How do you build this? It's a process. It? It's not just mm -hmm. something you have or don't have. Willpower is not an infinite resource. It, it It's exhaustible. So, Absolutely. so when you say discipline, so you're talking about a client who, Hey, they're ready to rock and roll. They're ready to put the work in, but what about the person who, Hey, you know, I know this is what I want to do, but I'm, I'm just like most people, like, like it's hard for me to follow through and do something every single day. Building a habit is really hard. So what do you have Absolutely. to say about that? Um, I spoon feed, I will spoon okay. feed. You. Okay. And I think for some people, they haven't had someone patient enough to spoon feed them. I will spoon feed you. I have one client who I have been begging to open up her business bank account for three months now. It's not hard. I could do it for her, but I told her, this is your business. If you want it to grow, like you say you do, this is your task. And I'm going to check with you every single week to see if you did it. Eventually, one day she's going to do it. She's literally going to do it because she's done everything else. So I don't know what the mind block is, you know, the actual business bank account. She has all the documentation to do it. Now, I do know she has, you know, she has uh, children, her business, some other things in her family. But I'm like, hey, at two o'clock on Friday, I'm going to call you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna call you or I'm gonna text you. Um, but even I, I don't think I have um official ADD, but I do know that I have some moments where I'm like, ah, I'm all over the place. And I have to sit down and say, okay, what is the one task you can get accomplished? Mm -hmm. Like you can literally get it done. It'll is there something that you can do that'll take you five minutes? Mm -hmm. is it going to kill you? Is five minutes going to kill you? Nope, it's not going to kill me. Okay, let me sit down and just do it. And sometimes I'll find, oh, well, I can do this next thing too. Let me just get that. Okay. And then the hour has gone by and I, and I feel good because I've right. done it. So right. I, I I feel like I don't want people to think that I've got it all figured out all together. I'm just, I'm. Oh, know, it, it looks I'm like it. All. That's for sure. Jesus. Jeez, jeez, no. jeez, Louise. I, I have a, <laughs> I have a strict schedule. I have a very strict schedule. Um, like I work out every morning. I log on to my government job by a certain time. I take a break at a certain time. I have client meetings at a certain time only. Now I do allow people. If you text me or you send me an email, give me some time. I respond, but I only take client meetings after a certain time. And I try to keep it, well, I got to keep it separate from my full-time job because I can't do them both at the same time. That That is actually, um, there's a term for it, but basically you've caused ADD because you've brought in so many things right. to distract you and you yep. split your brain and you just, you can't do it. Um, yep. I also, I don't, so I'm a Zumba instructor. I don't teach classes on Saturdays. I don't teach classes on Fridays. I don't do it. No, because that's my time to decompress or plan or be with my family. So have, having those those scheduled intentional times off. So absolutely, and so, my, so my important. husband's like my husband's like you totally veg out on Friday when you log off from work. I sure do. Mm -hmm. I totally veg out. I put on some comfy warm socks. I get my hoodie on, put a blanket, turn on a movie. I'm, I usually fall asleep on it, but it's that time for me that nothing is happening. And sometimes my brain is churning, but I resist picking up a notepad or getting back on the computer. I resist it unless it's really something important. I, re I mean, it's got to be like really, really important that I need to do, but I resist it. Mm -hmm. And I think that actually helps me keep calm and keep my patience. And it lets ideas flow. Sometimes it's yeah. like a form of meditation to just kind of let things flow. 
Yeah. You know. So so you you have the wherewithal to to do that because you just know how it works. Like for for me personally, my wife, you know, because my job is like I said before, it's it's crazy chaos. So she, hey, you know, for a number of years now, hey, you're turning you're turning things off at five o'clock. It's it's boys' time. We do dinner, get ready for bath seven thirty. They're down typically. And so that's my time off the phone. And then I can log in later. So, Hey, Jeremy Moore, this is for you. Yeah. That, uh, five o'clock, five 30. That's when we do ice cream juice for the boys. So, um, <laughs> anyway, that's a side joke. Um, gotta get that blender out. One of our kids, our three-year-olds, all he wants is ice cream just over and over and over. He just wants ice cream. So, you know what, uh, forgive us. We, we, we give in, but yeah, ha ha having the intentional time for, for the things like that you mentioned, that's so, so important and scheduling it you know, can be really important. Um, so, side question. So randomly, there's so many people out there that I'm talking, because I'm talking, I'm looking for people to be able to give the world examples of what people are doing to be able to generate income on the side. Because again, we talk about this all the time. Hey, you know what? Wages are not catching up with the cost of living and infl inflation, uh, but inflation is high right now, but inflation had been low for a number of years, but still the cost of living you know, from what people are actually feeling it has not been very good. I mean, people, it's been harder and harder for people to get ahead and save money, which then allows you to be able to possibly purchase assets and, and then let that compound over time. Um, so the person that that is out there working and, and building a job, um, it's an opportunity, you know, to be able to tur turn your passion into something. What What is something out there in, in the DC market that you would say, hey, this is something that people are doing a lot of on the side. And it's, it's a good opportunity for someone that's not doing something that maybe wants to, um, to be able to find something to be able to generate any income on the side. So what is something out there that people are doing that's working? And then is there something out there separately that 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 need more of to people to be part of, to, to, to provide a service? Um. So my response is going to be kind of jaded. So as a fitness instructor, um, I have been able to, um, when I first started, it was really, literally just supposed to um, fund studio time because I also sing. I know. <laughs> Yes, go to iTunes. The single's there. Karen Renee Ham, my, my maiden name. Lost or found. Okay, plug, plug, plug. Right. All, right, um, all right. But it was really supposed to be just for studio time. So it the, the license cost me $30 a month. And if each class, I could make $30 a class. So one class would pay for the month. And then the other classes is just pocket change. And it serves two purposes because I'm still exercising, right? And I put money in my pocket. So being a fitness instructor is one thing. So I would say something that also benefits you, if you can do something that you can do, people can pay you for, that also benefits you. Kill two birds with one stone. Um, a lot of people are sharing knowledge. You know, if you know how to do something, Make videos on YouTube. It seems very simple, but to do it. Do, create a quick course. White label some things. You can find small products. I, this blew my mind um, when I learned it, that you could purchase things off of Alibaba or go in the dollar store, things that were, you know, on clearance. And you could put them on Amazon, create a store, and then make money. I was like, Facebook uh, market, people are doing that too, like Etsy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have to have the time to put the store together, build it up and market it, but it's doable. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You could, you, you can still tutor, like tutoring is still a big thing. You could be a reading, you know, help, help, help a child learn to read. Like people pay money for things like that because they don't have time to do it or they don't have the patience to do it, mm -hmm. right? Um, one of my girlfriends, actually, she's a reading specialist by profession. And I said, so why aren't you doing this outside of work? Like, you could reach so many more children and now the world is virtual. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know how many parents want their child to move up a reading level? Mm-hmm. 20, 30 minutes, 
right? Mm -hmm. So charging for your knowledge, you know, and, and I'll say this, if, if you're like me and you're raised in church, people tell you, oh, your gift is from God. You're supposed to give it to the people. Sure. But even Jesus had a treasurer. And <laughs> what do you think that the treasurer was counting? He wasn't counting peanuts. <laughs> was, you know, they, they were counting money. So charge for your knowledge. Literally charge for the thing that you know you can do. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not saying gouge people, but charge so that it puts something in your pocket. Because you're right. Your your paycheck, if it's not beating inflation and you can't cut back your expenses enough, you're not going to have any money to set aside to purchase assets. You know. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Now, for the person who has still has good credit, leverage your credit to buy an asset that you can flip or leverage your credit to purchase a business or leverage your credit to purchase the tools you need to start your business. It's not income, which means it won't be taxed. And if you use it to start your business, then it's tax deductible. Mm -hmm. So you got to think past the, the myths that we were taught about money and credit in order to get ahead. Yeah. You gotta, think, yeah. you, you just gotta yeah. think past it. Yeah, you know, and you gotta take the chance because, yeah, okay, yeah. What's the worst that could happen? You charge a lot of stuff on your credit card, and it doesn't work out, and then you owe the money back. Okay, you won't die. You won't. You might be a little stressed for a little while paying the bill, <laughs> but you won't die. You won't. You won't. And if you don't keep trying, like some people just. You, you see people like, oh, I want to go here. I want to do this. But did you keep going? Did you try? One thing I don't people think people leverage enough is if you have a business idea and you know exactly how much it costs, let's say what you want to do costs $3,500. How many people can you get to give you $100? Are there 35 people who could give you $100? If you hunt. If you hunt, if you hunt hard enough, mm -hmm. there's probably you could probably find 35 people to give you $100. Somebody might actually give you more if you present the idea in the right way, right? Mm -hmm. We're so af we're so afraid of rejection. Yeah, uh, t totally. You get that first rejection or two or three, and then you stop. And you know that that that's that's a skill and a superpower in itself, knowing how to just keep persevering and pushing but having the faith and belief that hey it's actually going to work out you know this this instagram channel that we that we have um by by the way chris perry a really good realtor out there i bought his course for like 80 bucks and it was well worth it and gave me the inspiration and belief that hey this is worth worth my time to do to because i mean, literally, literally i'm i'm a, i'm like an old millennial like i'm the worst at social media mike swally can tell you this he's like my best friend my partner Joel is the worst person in social media in the history of the millennial world. But I'm, like, I'm, I'm probably the worst. Okay. <laughs> but like, I just but decided. I'm not a, but I'm not a millennial. But you're not, I'm okay. Okay. You're just, <laughs> just, you just, you just, you just gave us extra data there. Okay. Um, <laughs> but like, I just decided on July 12th that I was just going to do this and I was going to do it every single day. Cause in my mind, my world, I have to do it every single day for it to keep going. That's just how I work. And I started with two followers and then a 10 and I celebrated a hundred and then the 200 and I'm 40, 50 days in now at 340 followers. Like, and if you just keep going, just like your new year's resolution, you'll want to get into shape. You want to stop drinking alcohol. You want to don't, you know, not, not do sugar. People do it for a week. They do it for two weeks or a month, but they either forget or they don't see results. And so they may stop. And it's like, well, if you would keep going for a month, six, a year, all the results are going to show they're there after a week. You just can't see them by the naked eye. They're there. They're, just, they're not visible by the, by the naked eye. But when you fast forward the clock, those results become tangible. And so, yeah. I mean, that's why this, that's why we're here talking about this, right? Because there's so many people out there that, Hey, you know what? I, I do want to build a better life for myself. I do want to get ahead. 
And maybe it's just not the right time. Maybe they don't believe that they're worthy and maybe they don't believe they can do it. Um, but, but, or they just need help on where to get on path and then the resources to be able to continue on path. And that's what this is all about. You know, the mindset, the strategies, there, there's so many tools out there. Well, well where's the next tool that's going to get you from where you are to the next level. That's what this is all about because there's so much stuff out there. What's going to help you go from today to get to the next level up. And it's going to be a different thing for everybody else. And so we're just going to keep throwing stuff out there and maybe it'll help a few people. And then, and then after a year, it'll help more people. And, that, and that's what it's all about. I'm so, glad you're doing this because like I said before, yeah. like there, there's Tony Robbins, there's uh, Ethan Thomas, there's, you know, still, uh, what's my man, Les, you know, that, mm -hmm. that does the motivational speaking, but they're not going to reach everybody. So mm -hmm. Somebody is waiting for your voice. Somebody's waiting for my voice, you know. A hundred percent. And if you, my pastor says it this way, there's a problem in the earth that you were meant to solve or that you were meant to provide resolution for or assistance to. And until you step out and do it, the problem is going to exist. Yep. I like that. So if, 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 if really you say you're living and looking for your purpose, then again, the money doesn't matter. It will come. But mm -hmm. if you got to take the first step, if you don't move off the couch, it, you you will always be wondering what if, what if, yep. and how. So. So, so talking about believing in yourself and having faith, right? I mean, it is, it's really hard because you have all these distractions and social media and work and family and what all, all kinds of things. It's hard to focus on one thing, period, bottom line. And, you know, on this channel, we talk a lot about the little things that the absolute best are, are using and harnessing to be able to kind of tap into a superpower. And one of the things that we talk about is using the subconscious brain to help you reach your goals. And, you know, the example of, hey, when you drive home after work and it's been a long day you're distracted on the phone and maybe you go through a drive through whatever next thing you know you arrive at your destination at your house safely while driving a 2000 pound vehicle you know not but consciously you have thinking no about idea it at all. how you got there you have not no idea how you got there how the hell does that happen well that's your subconscious brain doing it because you've done you've done that work you've done that path that that path has been programmed into your brain and you know when we have a, a sport that we play or we're in school programming your subconscious mind is it's, it's happening under under underneath all the work that you're doing because you have this structure and the infrastructure guiding you through the process when we become adults and we're out of those those infrastructures you're all on your own and you don't have that infrastructure and so coaching is a great example where you have can build in this extra structure to keep you on path and for me personally you know there's a book uh, by weldon long called the power of consistency and he talks about his prosperity plan and he does he looks at his vision and his goals every single day and he's programming his subconscious brain to be able to reach his goals. And so that's something that I've had to do to be able to get to where I'm at and uh, not to, to throw shade on somebody because this is like a, a dear friend of mine. Um, but Andy Ward uh, is somebody that told me, you know what, what you're doing, because again, I'm in the mortgage industry. I'm in St. Louis, Missouri, and my clients are not in Missouri. They're in D.C., DC Florida, Carolinas, wherever else in the country. Just, I hey, <laughs> just that's just that's just where my connections were taking me, right? So. You know, there have been periods of times in our in our business and cycles where, hey, you know what? Why don't you just go do focus on doing some stuff here in St. Louis? And for him, it made sense, but for me, it didn't. And I I kept belief and faith in what my vision was and, and doing and doing these little things to keep me on path. And it's something that we joke about till, till this day. I was just talking about it literally like yesterday with them, um, talking about something else. He's like, you know, I'm going to tell you to do something. But you're just going to do the, the exact opposite, and it's going to work, and we're going to laugh about it. Um, <laughs> But the reason why I bring it up is because it's it's you know the subconscious brain um, using that to harness your your uh, and reach your goals. But this person was a naysayer in my life. He was a naysayer saying you can't do that. And sometimes you have to take that energy that can be a negative, and if you can turn it into a positive and use that fuel and energy for your betterment, it, it's it's not it's an opportunity, right? But I bring this up because this is a dear friend of mine. And in 2011, 2010, 2011, this person. Went out of their way. They're the top, the top producer at this bank. They went out of their way to seek me out on a Saturday. Uh, they saw my car up there on Saturdays, day in, day out, every week after week, trying to figure out how to, you know, generate revenue. Because I, I left inside sales to go to outside sales. And this person taught me a ton. And I wouldn't be where I'm at today without him. Um, so thank you, Sandy. 
just want to throw you a shout out. Um, and just a reminder, anybody out there, hey, you know what? We can't get to where we want to go without support from somebody, family, coaches, friends, whatever. So, um, and, and Kiana, what about you? Your mom, a big influence on you. I know that. We talked about that. And anybody else you uh, you can think of that uh, has been a part of your journey? Um, My mom definitely just, is, <laughs> you probably don't know this about her. Um, <laughs> my mom left Newport News, Virginia. She had finished like a two-year kind of business training school, basically how to be a good secretary or admin. She left Newport News with a one-way bus ticket to D.C. The lady said, I have a job for you in D.C. She was like, all right, I'm gone. She didn't have a place to live. She didn't know if the job was real. She actually went and worked at a real estate agent just to get the money for her bus ticket. Wow. And someone gave her a room and said, you don't have to pay until you start getting paid from your job. And the job was a month late after she arrived. But that one bus ticket, like she was like, I have to have a different life than what my family currently is living. So my mother is a baby boomer, so I won't tell you the year. <laughs> but she comes from a little dirt town in North Carolina. She moved to Newport News, and she said, I'm out of here. One-way bus ticket to D.C. A bus. No turning back. Greyhound in the 60s. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Put it into perspective. Mm -hmm. In the 60s, a, a young Black woman going to D.C. who's from the South. Knows nobody. And... After hearing her tell me that story, she probably told me that I must have been like mm, in my mid-20s. And I said, one, she can never get upset with me again for taking a chance <laughs> because right. she, she did it. And two, nothing beats a failure but a try. Mm -hmm. Nothing beats a failure but a try. And if you try, like, make a real attempt at something, you might not land the first time where you want to land, but you land somewhere close or closer to the goal than you expected. So that, that she's definitely motivation. Um, I do have friends that are motivating. Like, they have things that they've done, and I go, wow. You woke up one day and drank a glass of audacity and said, I'm going to try that. <laughs> you know? Um, my vocal coach um, survived Katrina and is one oh, wow. of the most successful vocal coaches in the world. Damn. Not just the United States, in the world. Wow. He's had students on The Voice and American Idol and one of his students, I'm going to say this, he's going to kill me, but uh, one of his uh, students is now the band leader for on the Stephen Colbert show. Oh, wow. Okay. You go from sitting on top of your roof after a flood, not mm -hmm. knowing if you're going to live, mm -hmm. to one of the top vocal coaches in the world. Yeah. That's crazy. It, that is crazy. Yeah. But he said, he said, I had to try. I met him in like, he, I met him right after Katrina. So 2000 into 2005. Yeah. And when he tells that story, I was like, I have no excuse. None. Yeah. Yeah. Because he, he moved from New Orleans to D.C. knowing nobody. Wow. You know, my brother, my, my brother is definitely influenced and I'm going to tell his business and, you know, he can be <laughs> out with me later. Um, he was diagnosed as dyslexic in college. Okay. So not high school, college. Damn. Okay. He's now a doctor. He's now a doctor of education. Wow. Took him a longer time than most people, but he, he just wouldn't, he wouldn't quit. Mm -hmm. And people supported him and saw that he was trying to get it along the way. It might not have been the the easiest path. It might not have been, you know, the path that most people take, but he did it. And every time he got to another level, I kept saying, I have no excuse. Mm -hmm. None. See, and that's the thing is that, you know, we have good days, we have bad days. I mean, we all have emotions up and down. And 
you know, one of the things that I've, I was talking to somebody about that, that I've seen is that, you know, you have somebody that starts on the path of trying to be able to make changes and improve. And then you have a horrible day. You're in the dumps. You feel like complete manure, dog shit, whatever you want to call it. And the effect of that, you know, it, it's mind, it's body, it's, it's internal. And a lot of times people don't recover the next day. You know what? I'll, I'll, I'll wait till tomorrow. I'll wait till tomorrow. And then the next thing you do, you get into it, you do it, you do it. And it doesn't, it doesn't feel the same. You don't have the same energy or excitement. And next thing you know, you're not, you're not on that path anymore. Um, and so how, how do you pull yourself back from, Hey, this, this low moment, we're all going to have the low moments, but how do you pull yourself back to getting on path? And, and for so many, that can be the difference from it, reaching it your goal or not. Different. You have to, you have to first say that when you start on the goal, like when I'm going to start, you actually have to tell yourself, it's not going to be all roses. Mm -hmm. You, you, you kind of have to go into it. Yes. With the confidence that I can get to the goal, but it's not going to be a straight line. Like it's not mm -hmm. going to be straight up. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some bumps. It's just like stock market. There's going to be some bumps in the road. So if you look at a stock market chart, over one year, it might look a little grim, right? But if you look at it over 10 years, it's going to look different. Yep. 20 years, but 30 years. You, right. You got to stick with it. If, if, if the goal is really what you want, like you say, this is what I want, then you, what you're saying is I want all the things that come with it. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, um, um, Steve Jobs uh, video of his commencement speech for Stanford. I think it was like 2001 or four. I forget what year it was. And he gave three stories and parables. And I forget what the stories were, but every one of them had the exact same theme. Was, you know, you just got to believe in yourself long enough to keep going and just keep going and get through the struggle and get through um, the failure and, and, and get to their side. And, and that's just, if you have a goal, just don't stop till you get there. That, that's what Kobe and Tim Grover, Michael Jordan, that's how they think. They, they don't count down to a deadline or a goal. They count up. They're not going to stop till they get their goal. And that's just something that's helped me personally, thinking about things in a little bit of a different way, you know? And um, so we're, we're running out of time. Um, re remind the listeners, they can find you at web website and how, and, and do you want to give out an email or no? Up to you. Well, no, I can give what, out. <laughs> how can they get you on? Okay. We'll do Instagram again. And yeah. Yeah. Sure. So the Instagram, I want to make sure I give the business Instagram correctly, because a, a part of what I do also is I look at my clients' um, Instagram, their social media pages and say, what, what is that you got going on there? <laughs> so um, my company is Firewater Group, LLC, and the Instagram is Firewater Group, all one word. Um, you can find me there. Same on Facebook. I am Generation X, so yes, I am kind of giving you some hints about my age, um, but he would never believe it. So, <laughs> nope. but nope. if you want to follow like my personal stuff, um, Sweet Ms. M Z Kiki K E Y K E Y um, on Instagram, and you'll see me singing. You'll see me teaching Zumba. Um, sometimes I drop some business nuggets, but I try to keep that on my business page. Um, I also like science. I'm a nerd. So um, you might see some of those things and a lot of motiv motiv motivational things because I know, you know, not just business, but people are trying to get through life. Damn right. And, With good know, people have, on their side. Uh, yeah. And I have a saying, life be life. And <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. And so you got you to gotta get through life. Yeah. We're going to have to have you back on uh, very soon again. I want to hear some more stories with some of your uh, success stories and life stories. And Kiana Hargett in the D.C. area, so happy to have you on and can't uh, wait again to catch up. Absolutely. Thank you, Joel. All right. See ya.